segment, we will be talking about pelvic floor muscle anatomy and function. So what I tell people who come into my clinic is we're going to go through my spiel and let's give you some education about what is going on down there. Um, again, pelvic physical therapists always carry around their pelvic model, so here we are again. Um, with the anatomy, we're going to start with just general bony anatomy. Here are your pubic bones, your pubic symphysis. These are what I call your ilia. Most of us call them our hip bones because here's where your hip socket is and your leg bone comes up. As we turn the model around, we've got your lumbar spine, sacrum, and your coccyx, also known as your tailbone. Then we have about 24 pelvic floor muscles in here, give or take. It depends on who you're talking to, but that's what we, we usually say here. So if we go over general anatomy, out on the outer edge, we actually have your labia majora, which is where your pubic hair grows. That tissue is skin. When we open up the labia majora, there's a line called heart's line where your tissue turns from skin to mucosal-like tissue. And I tell people, it's just like your nose. Your nose is skin on the outside, but if you go up and in, it's all continuous, but it turns into mucosa where it's, it's supposed to be moist and lubricated and, and wet. Um, so that's, that's the beginning. Then we have the tip of the iceberg of your clitoris. I will show you um, a better picture later and a model of that. You've got your labia minora. And if I get over here, then you're going to have your urethra, which is where you urinate. You're going to have your vagina right here. And then you're going to come down and this is um, the external anal sphincter. Then we get into pelvic muscles. So your outer layer of muscles, you can see on this side, there's one, two, and three. And then there's three on the other side. That's six muscles total. These muscles are like your bicep muscles or your jaw muscles, so you can control them when you want to, but normally they do their own thing. Hopefully we'll make sure they listen to your brain as we go through the rest of the treatment. Um, you also see on this model that we've got a duct and a gland, that little red part at the bottom. You have those on both sides. That's, those are called your Bartholin glands. You also have skein glands that are further up and they're very tiny. We can't see those very well. They help with lubrication, um, basically. Okay, um, then if we take this superficial or outer layer off, we have what we call the middle layer of pelvic floor muscles. And unfortunately, we don't see them on this model. But you've got muscles that come in about six on each side. They go around your urethra, around your vagina, and around your anus. Then we come to the deepest layer of muscles. We can look at them this way, or if I turn the model this way, we'll see them. Okay. Three muscles on each side. These are called the levator ani muscles, so you've got six muscles total. Um, they also attach to your hip muscle called the obturator internus they come up and attach into your abdominal fascia and they help um, work with your abdominals. Then if we go this way, you can see that you have tissue attaching to your, your tailbone or your coccyx, also maybe your sacrum. Now, these models only show really the muscle. Also inside there, you have endopelvic fascia that help to support your tissues as well. This is just our basic understanding. What the pelvic muscles do is they sit in your pelvis like a hammock. So let's come back over here. All right. Um, they help support your organs. They help work with the abdominal muscles that also um, talk to your spinal muscles and help give you stability. And I say they help with core stability. They also attach to your hip muscles, so they're helping when you're walking. That's the second function. Third function is when you don't want to leak urine, have sex, pass gas, or have a bowel movement, the muscles tighten up. Um, that's what most people know of as the Kegel tight, tightening or muscle contraction. So we want those muscles to be able to tighten, definitely, but you also need to be able to completely relax the pelvic muscles. So we want to be able to tighten just like your bicep muscle tightens, but you also want the muscles to be, to be able to relax so you can um, 
pee normally, have sex without pain, and have um, normal bowel movements as well. The last function is sexual. This muscle right here goes into a rhythmic contraction when you have an orgasm. It's the pleasurable part of an orgasm. And remember, nothing works in isolation, so there are a lot of other things happening here as well, but that's the main muscle that most people talk about. Um, typically, many women achieve an orgasm via clitoral stimulation because the tissue of the clitoris is very similar to um, the male penis tissue. And what we need for that is we need stimulation at the clitoris site for your nerve endings and you also want to have good blood flow in that clitoris to make sure you're getting better sensation. Once you get that sensation then the pelvic muscles go into that rhythmic um, contraction and you have the orgasm. So those are the basic, uh, basic pelvic floor muscle anatomy and the function of the muscles, support, stability, sphincteric, and sexual functioning. I also want to touch on the fact that we have a pudendal nerve that not very many people know about. Okay, so it's hard to see, we're going to show you a diagram as well, that the, the pudendal nerve comes out of the inside or the front side of your sacrum and it actually then courses out, sort of hard to see, and it can go over and under two ligaments. It comes underneath your sits bones, and then you have branches. You have a branch that goes to the external anal sphincter, you have branches that go to the pelvic muscles, and you have branches that go to um, the clitoris. So that's the basic anatomy of the pudendal nerve. Um, and that helps in all of the pelvic floor muscle function. Now, if we want to look to see what the clitoris looks like, the model of the clitoris, you have um, the glands at the very end, and then we have what are called the legs of the clitoris. You also have bulbs, and if you can see here, you'd have your vagina um, here and your urethra, and then you sort of see the labia minora. Um, the thing about the clitoris is that it has tissue that helps to absorb blood, you've got nerve endings going to the glands, and it's actually very similar to the tissue of the male penis. When we're comparing it to the male penis, we see that we've got the legs of the penis and then you also have the legs of the clitoris. This shows you down here on this bony model where the legs and the glands sit and then you're going to have more of the bulbs of the, um, the penis as well as the bulbs of the clitoris. So it's really important for women to understand that um, we have more just than that little tip of the clitoris. Okay, the last thing to talk about is just where your organs sit inside of your pelvis. So this is a cross section, so this is someone, we're looking at someone from the side, and what we have here is we have the pubic, sim, or pubic bone, pubic symphysis in the front, we've got your bladder and your urethra, I tell people this is where you pee, that's your uh, garden hose, then you have your vagina, cervix, and uterus, if you still have them, if you don't, that's where your uterus and cervix, uterus and cervix used to sit, um, if you've had a hysterectomy. And then here's your rectum, this is your tailbone, and then that's the hammock of pelvic muscles. So that's sort of basic anatomy of what we look like from a side view. That concludes our pelvic anatomy, pelvic floor muscle anatomy and function education.